Hello and welcome to the ASC T6 Electrical and Electronic System Test Study Review. Now, my name is David Roscoff. I'm a current ASC certified master tech with my L1 and I'm pursuing my world-class technician certification, which is both taking the A series, the T series, both L series and some other tests. So what I'm gonna be doing in this video is I'm gonna be showing you and giving you some advice how to hopefully pass the T6. Now we have videos for all of the A series, how to pass them and they've been very successful. We also have our own website, driverstherapy.com where we offer our own courses. Those are paid versions where if you need additional help, additional tutoring, that's what it's there for to help you out and help you if you're getting a little stuck. All right, let's get started. So first off, I took the T6 and I passed. I passed it in my first time. And I wanna give you a quick background. I've taken the A6, which is the automotive version of it, and the L1, which is the advanced series, which has a lot of electrical questions. And let me tell you, the T6 was a little on the easier side for me, and I think it's because I've accomplished those two other tests. So when I say easy, if you're barely stepping into taking your AC test, this test is definitely not gonna be on the easy side. But again, follow these steps and you'll be okay. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna buy the Motor Age Study Guide. I'm not sponsored. As a matter of fact, it would be great if I was sponsored, but I'm not. But I tried different types of study guides. I tried the Del Mar, I tried the Motor Age, and I've tried other ones. And let me tell you, the Motor Age one is the best. So how do you approach this study guide? Well, you go from cover to cover. It's not very big. The first portion of it really breaks down a theory of operation, really breaks down uh, uh, so certain categories and subjects, and it kind of gives you information to help you pass the test. But at the back of the test are practice questions, and I think there's between 60 to 70, and those you need to make sure that you get them all right. If you get them wrong, you have to really review why you got them wrong. Also, I always recommend that you guys go on ac.com and buy their own practice test. Literally, they offer a practice test for majority, 90% of their test, and it's the best way to understand how they're gonna approach questions. So I typically tell you to buy the motor age and get the practice test. Now, I've been making videos how to help people pass their AAC certifications for years now, and I get a lot of different comments. Most of it are thank you, and people are grateful for us guiding them to their certifications. But others are, you know, you need the experience. People are saying you need the experience, and you know, you just can't read a book and pass them. And I agree, if you're a brand new technician and you're trying to take these tests, you're literally gonna have to put in double, triple, quadruple the amount of study time than if you actually have the hands-on experience. The great thing about these tests is that they cover both sides. They cover the academic side and the hands-on side. So you really need to make sure you have both. And if you don't, the best thing you can do is be an apprentice, go out there and offer your time for free at a shop or at a trade school, but you really need to get that experience. Now, when it comes to electrical systems, every make and model has them. So throughout the decade of, or a couple of decades now, I feel old, of working on cars, I've ran into so many electrical issues, so many stuff that I've worked on. When I was in the army, I was an avionics technician, which meant I was a spark chaser. I literally worked on electrical systems. So having that experience is really gonna help you. Now, some of the things you need to get real versed if you're a brand new technician and you wanna get your T-series and you wanna pass this test, is you're gonna have to know how to use a multimeter or a DMM as an acronym, which is for digital multimeter, you're really gonna have to know how to use that. You're gonna have to know every setting. We have a free video series, meaning that we have from the beginning to advance how to use a multimeter. I'm gonna put the link in the description. At the end, you'll see the playlist for it but you really know, need to know how to use a multimeter. You need to know how to check voltage. You need to know how to check resistance. You need to know how to check continuity. You need to check how to do voltage drops. All of those are really important things you need to know when you're actually pursuing your electrical certification. You have to use a digital multimeter. Whenever you're using a digital multimeter in the real world, you'll realize that you're either gonna use that or a scan tool, and then you're gonna use the next thing that's literally your buddy, and that's gonna be your schematics, your wiring diagrams, or your software that pulls that up for your vehicle. 
Now, the great thing about wiring diagrams and schematics is that they are the map and your friend to troubleshooting. Anytime that you're trying to look for an issue, you're going to have to look at a schematics. Hopefully, if you're watching this video, you've dealt with a lot of wiring diagrams. You've troubleshot issues using a wire diagram. If you do that, you are ready to essentially start learning how to pass this test. If you've never utilized a wiring diagram or schematic to troubleshoot your real world issue, you're going to have a lot of problems because this test actually has questions with wiring diagrams that you need to isolate. You need to figure out what's going on and you need to be able to deduct what is actually the possibility of what went wrong with it versus what the other answers are offering you. So you actually need to have that hands on. Also going to put in the link where this guy who has a great YouTube channel, he breaks down um, wiring diagrams and schematics better than I do. So I recommend you looking at his channel first if you don't know anything about wiring diagrams and schematics. And if you are, it's a good refresher, but you really need to know how to understand what a switch is, what a relay is, how a relay works, how a switch works, how electricity flows, how it flows from negative to positive, how it literally works, where you should have a voltage, where you should have resistance. Whenever you're looking at a circuit, if you're doing a voltage drop, if you're supposed to have you know voltage at what part of it, the relay, all of this stuff is really critical to know. So if all of this sounds very foreign to you, you should wait, get some experience before you start taking this test because these electrical tests are no joke. They are literally required. They're requiring you to have some experience because they're testing you that way, which I actually think is pretty good. So a couple of things you really want to know for the test, again, schematics, wind diagrams, voltage drop and batteries. If you've dealt with batteries in cars, you're going to be very far in the automotive test. You want to know batteries and you want to know starter systems. Very, very important for this test. Extremely important. You want to know what a static charge is. So let's say you turn the car off on your battery. How much voltage are you supposed to have? Are you supposed to have 14 volts, 13 volts, 12 volts? I don't want to give you the answer because I want you guys to look for it, but that's something really important. And of course that static charge will go down to the regular charge, you know, of your battery. So you need to know batteries really well. You need to know your different types of batteries, your lead batteries, your AGM batteries. You just really need to understand what happens when a battery is being charged, when to test the battery, how to test the battery. All this stuff is super important for you to pass this test. So what should you do guys, right? Motor age. I'm hearing you as if you were, in class with me, you want to get the motor age book. You want to learn how to use a digital multimeter. You want to be proficient with schematics and wiring diagrams. You want to know how to troubleshoot using wiring diagrams. You want to know how to do voltage drops, check for continuity. You want to know batteries, car automotive batteries. You want to know how they charge, uh, what their actual voltage is supposed to be, how you're supposed to check a voltage drop in a battery system, a starter system, the solenoid, how a solenoid works, where you're supposed to have power, how you're supposed to do voltage drop checks in a starter system. So all of this is really important for you to know, but here's a couple of questions also that you might want to look into. How much is your alternator supposed to be putting out? How does an alternator work? The signal wire, the feed wire, how does an alternator actually work and how do you troubleshoot it without actually taking it out and bench testing it? How do you troubleshoot it within the car, within the circuit? Also understanding different sensors like your ABS sensor or your speed sensors. Those are gap sensors, right? How does, what happens if the gap is too big or too small? So those are some of the things I want to give you an idea of how these tests work. But before we end the video, I'm going to give you one more kind of rundown of what you should do. You need to buy the motor age book, study uh, practice test. It's like 13, 14, 15 bucks. I forgot. It's not very expensive. Get that. Once you've completed that, then you need to look into using a digital multimeter, knowing how to use all of its features, understand voltage drop. Then you need to understand how switches work and relays work and how you test them. And then you need to look at a schematic and you need to watch that this the video that I put in the description where that guy really goes deep into schematics because he's really going to help you out. And then after that, once you do all that, you're literally going to want to learn how the battery system works, how to test the battery, how to diagnose a battery, what a surface charge is, also the starter system, the starter, the solenoid, how to do voltage drop tests, how to check the voltage in different parts of the solenoid. And then after that, you're going to want to know how switches work, how a 
see uh, hall center works, things like that. And then you really wanna get real well versed with troubleshooting things. If a car doesn't start, again, you're going to see schematics. You're going to see wiring diagrams in the test. Now, I can't tell you what's on a test because I would get in big trouble, right? But one thing I can tell you is that there are literally schematics in the test they're gonna ask you, they're gonna have like a little multimeter and it's gonna have little leads and they're gonna be like, this is what the multimeter shows and in two different spots, what's going on. And you have to know, okay, the lead is in the positive side, the lead is in the negative side, it's on the beginning of the relay circuit, the certain relay circuit isn't energized or it is energized, you're literally gonna have to walk through all of that. You're gonna have to find the ground, where's the ground, where's the ground side of the circuit, where are you probing, where are you checking, Again, if you've never dealt with the schematic and looked at a car or a truck and went over and be like, all right, I've got a schematic, I've got my multimeter, I'm gonna go troubleshoot, and you actually fix an issue with that, you need to get to that point first and then start all of this because they're gonna be asking you questions directly from those types of experiences. Well. If you literally want to check out our website and start from the very beginning, if you're a new student and you're ambitious and you're like, I'm gonna take my T6 no matter what, then most likely you wanna start our very basic electricity class where literally you learn what electricity is and then take our free digital multimeter class, which is the one that we're gonna put on the playlist. And if you need to learn about schematics, check out the video, I put it in the description and also check out our video because we actually troubleshoot a problem in our video as well, which is pretty good. And that's a paid one. And again, get your motor age and go from there. Well, if you have any questions, put it in the description. You can email us. We appreciate you watching. Good luck on your test. And again, we appreciate it. Take care, stay safe. Goodbye.